Hey guys, welcome to the Dopish Film and TV Podcast. I am your host, Edward Merced, and we are back again, just like I said uh, that we would be. Mm. And now you can see my face, so you know what I look like. <laughs> just don't find out where my address is. Um, what's up, everybody? Uh, this is a podcast for everyone who loves film and TV. Um, basically, we're on the Dopish Podcast Network, coming to you live from my bedroom. That has a lot of stuff. There's there's stuff on there's more stuff on that side than this side. I might have to switch it, or just get like a I don't know. What should I get? Let me know. This is brand new to me. I mean, not podcast. I've been doing it for two years, but for somebody to see my face, I don't know. It's kind of weird. I don't know if I like it. Um, but yes, again, this is the Dopers Film and TV Podcast. Uh, a couple things. We're going to talk about Artemis File. We're going to talk about The King of Staten Island. Uh, 13 Reasons Why. Um, season 4, the final season. Is there anything I left off my list? I don't think so. Is there anything that came out that I'm not thinking about? I don't know. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. But, like all good podcasts, we're going to start with a little bit of uh, the bubble. No. Oh, well, I should probably say this first. So, remember, guys, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Look us up, the Dopish Network. Uh, where all the content is, Podbean, uh, the hosting site, uh, iTunes, um, let me see who else, uh, Spotify, that stuff there, um, just look us up and, you know, we're, uh, pretty cool. Uh, yeah, that's it. Um, remember to check out the other podcast, Heroes and Villains on Tuesdays, Wednesdays is this one, Thursdays is the stories of the mysterious and the supernatural, Friday, gonna be the Slasher Club, and Saturday mornings is gonna be the wrestling podcast, and full match reactions, booyaka, now with that being said, and you know, out the way, let's get into some news, <gasps> I don't know. I don't know. Um, so attack the block two. Joe Cornish has been speaking with John Boyega. It's a little crazy. I haven't seen the movie. I know I should. It's one of the ones that I haven't seen amongst the thousands I have or millions. I don't know. It's a good question. How many movies have I seen? I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, but that sounds pretty cool because I heard the first one's good. I'll, I'll watch it. I'll watch it this week. Okay. I'll watch it this week and I will, uh, review it. I will review it and see what my thoughts are, but it sounds cool that he might be coming back, you know, cause you know, he needs to bump up from his last movie. Um, you McGregor is voicing Jiminy Cricket in Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Um, that's pretty good, I guess. I don't know if I'm excited for that. When you wish upon a star. No, you know, can he pull that off? I don't know. Um, but I've seen it here, and I'm going to click on this because I have not seen this yet. I have not seen this, and I feel like we should watch it together. Uh, this is going to be like a actual reaction to, uh, to a trailer. I'm going to do a reaction trailer inside this podcast. Why not? It's mine. I don't give a shit. Um, train to Basant follow up called Peninsula promises a wild ride in its new trailer. Let's see this new trailer, man. I love this stuff. Zombies. I am there. That's why I'm starting a horror podcast, man. I love that shit. Go schools to give me something to possess me, right? (laughs) Anyway. Um, Let me see. Let me see. All right. 
starting right now. Oh, that's loud. Oh, snap. Four years after, trained to be sung. Oh. You get the truck, come back with the money. That's 2.5 million dollars per head. What the fuck? If you come back alive. Oh shit. This looks crazy. Hop in if you want to live. Was that Terminator? What the hell? At least. Oh, okay. So they're doing something like this. Are they gonna fight off fucking zombies? That is fucked up. That's not cool, man. Oh my god. This looks pretty intense, man. What the fuck? Is that fire? What? Like, firecrackers? Train to Bazan presents presents Peninsula. What the fuck? Um, it looks kind of crazy. It looks really intense. Like Train to Bas- Train to Bazan, as if you're following uh, this podcast network, I did it on one of the 31 days of Halloween horror movies. Um, I looked at that movie. I saw it before. I just didn't pay attention, and then I saw it again. It was pretty good. Um, but it was, it was low key. It was a low key movie. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it, that, that was just really intense. Like that was, that was pretty much like double the action, triple the excitement, get the out again. That, that's what that was. Um, yeah, that seems pretty cool, man. Uh, I'm excited to see that because that movie was pretty tight. Um, Ben Stiller is directing Oscar Isaac in new thriller London. That should be cool. Um, Ooh, Will Smith is starring for Antoine Fuqua in emancipation. Sorry, emancipation. I can only guess what that is. Um, let me see. Uh, Jurassic World is going to start reshooting in July. Um, the Oscars officially delayed to April. So, we're going to see what's uh, going on later. Uh, Tenet's been delayed two weeks, but it's still coming out. Um, Miles Teller is going to be on a survival thriller called Not Without Hope. Let me see more on this. Uh, the Tom Hanks war movie Greyhound is arriving in July on Apple TV+. Plus. I think I talked about that before. Um, let me see. Yeah, just a couple of... Um, stuff it's not like because you it's 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 very few and far between actual good stories that you want to talk about um uh spider-man into the spider-verse sequel starts production so that's pretty cool i think and we did get a trailer for bill and ted face the music uh i saw this trailer uh i the, the poster i think the poster looks fantastic the poster is like it's something I would hang on a wall. I don't know why. It's just, it speaks to me. Uh, it's just them going into the booth and it's just nothing behind, but like, I guess space time continuum. Um, 
the trailer, I mean, they're old. So, you know, you're not going to get like, it's, it's funny because Keanu Reeves back in the day had a high pitched voice for the dude. What's up, dude? And now he's more like, Hey, hi, hi, dude. And, and you're like, okay, well, I don't know if it works. Uh, be excellent. You know, he's with his Neo voice. So it's just, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty funny. I think, I think. Um, I guess the new Blumhouse thriller you should have left with Kevin Bacon. I don't know what that's about, but I I definitely want to look at that. That's for sure. Um, and there's not too much else after that. Um, I guess I'll just go into the reviews now. Um, Artemis Fowl will be the first one. Uh, so. You know how people bought up properties like Harry Potter, you know, the Hunger Games, and there's some that were good and some that there was not good. Uh, the Divergent series, I think, wasn't great. The Maze Runner, it took too long for the last one to get out. Um, you know, Percy Jackson was okay. It's coming back out. This is one of the ones that wasn't that great. Um, it was all over the place. I... It, Kenneth Brown, he did a great job with the first Thor, uh, but this, um, you know, he's the director. This, this was just, I don't know, man. It's like, uh, like I wanted to be good. A uh, Josh Gad, you know, was like a, like a Hagrid, uh, character, um, in a sense, and he had like a a, a big black guy of a, um. Like a butler, but don't call him a butler. And I and I get the pre- like he was a bodyguard, but I I don't know. It just it didn't click. It didn't click. Like towards the end, I just I stopped caring. Uh, Judy Dench uh, plays Danny DeVito uh, in the movie, and um, maybe a tinge of a uh, David Bowie, but um, one one out of ten. I don't know. It's just a story structure because the thing about it is, you know, Artemis Fowl's dad gets kidnapped and then he's brought into this world, but the kid is like super duper genius. So it's like, can you really fool him? But you can't, but he's still a kid. So he has feelings. Um, so I don't really know how to take that necessarily. Um, so. One out of ten, I'm gonna give it like a five, maybe a four. I wasn't really hyped about it. It was, it was okay at best. You know what I'm saying? Okay at best. Um, I'll go into what's next. Uh, Thirteen reasons why. Thirteen reasons why. So. The first season was great because the story, the premise was different. And then they just dragged it along. Not not in a bad way. They, they, you saw the repercussions of what happened. Um, and it was great. This last season um, was good in the same vein as everything else. It was good. Um, there was times where it kind of went into like what we're experiencing nowadays. And that was cool. The thing I didn't like was at the very last, not the last, but second to last episode, something happens and it's out of nowhere. And the last episode, it literally stabs you in the face. Um, it's, it hit, it hit hard. Um, but it was good. It was, I, it was good, but at the same time, it just for that, cause you're, you're hoping everything comes out okay. And it doesn't. And I guess in life, it also doesn't. So that's basically what happened. Um, the acting's good in there. They, they act like teenagers. Um, I think some of them are not teenagers anymore. I could be lying. Um, 
but just the way the dynamic between the adults and the kids go, it's 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 good to see in this day and age. Just because you're like, I know, you know, if that's done to me, how would I react? Would I react the same way? Would I have given a shit? You know, it's, you know, at 2.30, school's over. Um, But there's some stuff in here you're like, oh, I don't know about that. I don't know if parents should be doing that. I don't know if a school should be doing that. And it really questions the boundaries that teachers or educators have with their students. So, uh, yeah, one out of ten of this season, the last season, I give it an eight. I want to give it a one because the last fucking episode, but yeah, you're going to have to see that shit. Cause, uh... <laughs> no, but it's good. It's good. Um... Uh, last but not least, um, I guess, yeah, uh, so Judd Apatow came out with a new movie called The King of Staten Island, starring, um, wow, I want to, th- <laughs> Steve Buscemi's in the movie, but I don't know why I was going to say Steve Buscemi, um, oh my god, what, uh, <laughs> It's funny. It's, it's, it's funny, man. It's, uh, let me see. Uh, oh, this is, oh, it's too, oh, why can't I? Pete Davidson. <laughs> Pete Davidson is in this movie. Um, he basically plays himself in a, in a sense because, his dad uh, died in a fire, just like how his dad died in nine eleven. You know when he was younger, um, and all that good stuff. Um, basically, he's just a guy who's twenty four years old who's trying to figure out his life. Um, <clears throat> you know, his dad's not there. His mom's a single mom, just trying to keep everything together. And, uh, he's a delinquent. He's, you know, he's, he's trouble and he, and a series of events sparks off, uh, a love interest for his mom. And then basically just, uh, things start, you know, like a domino effect to where, you know, he kind of gets a guidance system with a band of firefighters. And I guess the thing he's been searching for the longest he finds and it it shows it it shows what happens when two people like him and his sister thought differently of what happened he ended up being where he ended up and she ended up going to college he didn't and um it shows you what can happen with two different personalities you know have different results um it was good. Marissa Tomei plays the mother. Um, Bill Burr plays the love interest, uh, who's also a firefighter in uh, the house uh, that he eventually stays in and works for. Um, and it's it's good. It it just shows, you know, he he's he's a total he's a total fuck up, you know, and that's what it is. But he sh- but it shows you that he only ever fucked up because you could see that his father dying affected him tremendously more than his sister. And, you know, he never had the stern relationship of a man inside of his life that he needed. And once he gets it from, like I said, these uh, firefighters and Bill Burr, You know, he starts seeing life for what it is and what he can make it. So, uh, including all that, uh, it was a good movie. The direction of uh, Judd Apatow was good. Uh, There's some funny moments. There's some good actors that come out of nowhere in this. Um, Steve Buscemi is great. Bill Burr is excellent. (laughs) Um, 
his his group of friends in the movie are so fucking stupid. It's it's so dumb. Uh but it's 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 good though. It's good. Um Yeah, man. I'll give it I give it a uh eight. I give it a seven point five. Seven point five. Because it was a tad long. It was like two hours and 17 minutes. Um, I mean, it's this is the second outing for them because they worked on big time adolescence. And that was okay. But it, it's almost like you played the same character. So I want to see maybe Pete Davidson maybe um, brought in the spectrum. I think he could do it. You know, he's 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 funny on Saturday Night Live. So, if you're funny and you know comedic timing, then you know how to do drama well. I always thought that's you know the the connective tissue to one to the other. <sighs> yeah, it's pretty uh pretty fantastic, and that's gonna be it for the show tonight. I want to thank you for looking at me. Thank you for listening at me, because this is the love hour, power hour. No, I'm not gonna do it. Um, again, guys, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all them things down there. You like and subscribe. Go ahead and uh, write a comment, like this video. Also, like the podcast on the audio form on Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, all that shit. You already know what the deal is. Uh, special shout out to way back when Antiques and Collectibles uh, were doing stuff with them. Uh, they're in Margate, Florida. If you're in the area, check them out. You can find them on Facebook and Instagram as well. Um, yeah, guys, look. Tomorrow, uh, gonna be doing uh, the Amityville Horror on the stories of the mysterious and the supernatural. Uh, anyway, again, I'd like to thank you guys for uh, going with me on this uh, ride. Um, and I'll catch you on the flippity flip. I don't really know what to say. I don't really like this uh, music I have either. I think I might change that. I'm, I might get... Catch me on the flippity flip. Where's that from? It's from the office. What's up, cut? I guess not. That's cool, man. All right, deuces. <laughs>